watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Uh, welcome to Faith and Grace Life. This is where we enjoy all that the God, uh, Lord Jesus has brought for us. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in God's presence today and I believe you are glad too. We are going to share the word of God. We are going to look at the scriptures and build our faith in God. Amen. Before I go on, let's just say a word of prayer. Our precious Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful privilege to be here. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for this great platform. You have given us the privilege, Lord. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for the people under the sound of my voice. The people that you have prepared this holy meal for. Father, we pray that the entrance of your word will give light to them. And let it give understanding to the simple. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that this world will benefit us. We transform us. We heal us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, glory to God. Today we want to start a new series that is very i mean it, it, it is at the heart of my heart because uh this this series is on knowing god it's on knowing god you know a man of god said there is a difference between knowing god and knowing about god you know many people know about god they know about god from what they have been taught by their pastor by their Sunday school teacher, they know about God. People, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, they know so much about God, but they don't really know God. And my prayer is that we will know Him. May we know Him. May we know Him. Apostle Paul prayed this prayer for himself. You know, he prayed it for us in the book of Philippians. He said that I may know Him and the power of resurrection. If Apostle Paul can pray such a prayer that I may know him. I think you need to know him. I need to know him. We have not known him enough. But by the grace of God, as we begin to look at the scripture, the Lord himself will reveal himself to us. Amen. The only way you can know God is from his scriptures. You know, as I said, that, that, that man of God said something. He said, there is a difference between knowing God and knowing about God. You know, when you truly know God, you have energy to serve him. You be have boldness to share him. And you have contentment in him. Many of us, we don't have the energy to serve him. We don't have the boldness to, to share Christ. And we, don't, we are not even content with him. Why? Because we don't know him. We don't know this God. My prayer is that God will reveal himself to us. To this teaching now by the grace of god we we, we want to go into uh, the book of first john the epistle of first john you know and god by the grace of god will be doing some exposition teaching expository teaching from that book from that epistle you know and it's going to take us some time because we, we don't need to rush it if christ tarries he will take us through chapter one chapter two up to chapter five of first john and will be richly blessed i want to believe amen so today's topic by the grace of god the message from the first chapter we might be taking about two to to top it from uh, uh, from the first chapter but the the message for today is god is light god is light amen so let's let's start by looking at the scripture from verse one of first john chapter one it says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Verse 2. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you, I mean, that eternal life which was uh, with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Amen. You know, I, I, I love to use New King James Version. You know, it, it's, it's rich. You know, when you look at verse 3 of that scripture, verse 3 of that scripture in New King James Version says, That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you. 
<coughs> with the, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the essence of <coughs> of 1 John, I mean, John the Beloved, the Apostle John, uh, the, the aged one, you know, it's, he, he wrote this epistle for us to be able to, he's trying to promote our fellowship with God, the Father and with His Son. Amen. We can see in this scripture here that that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father. Amen. And with His Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 4. And this thing we write to you that your joy may be full. Amen. So when you have this understanding that, you know, we need to have fellowship with our brethren. And the one at the center of our fellowship is God the Father and God the Son Himself. And you know through the power of the Holy Ghost. And this thing we write to you that your joy may be full. You know, <clears throat> I mean, without having, if you don't, if you don't have fellowship with God, if you don't have fellowship with God, there is no way you can have joy. <laughs> I still have joy. I still have joy. All oh, that I have been through, I still have joy. Hey, I still have joy. I still have joy. All oh, that I have been through, I still have joy. The only way you can sing that kind of a song is when your fellowship is with the Father. When you enjoy fellowship with the Father and with the Son. You know, because the Bible tells us clearly in John, in, 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 in Psalm 16 verse 11, the Bible says, You will show me the part of life. In your presence is fullness of life. At your right hands are pleasures forevermore. You see, when you have fellowship with God, when you are always in the presence of God, he said, in your presence is fullness of joy. Many of us, we don't have joy because we don't have fellowship with the Father. We don't, uh, we don't know God. We don't even... You can only fellowship with someone you know. And you can't have joy if you don't have fellowship with God. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at Psalm 51. Verse 12. The psalmist cried to God again. He said, restore me the joy. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And upon me by your generous spirit. Can you see you know, that was a psalm he wrote when he, he committed a sin uh, with, with, with Bathsheba. You know, he cried to God, Lord, don't take, don't, don't drive me away from your presence, Lord. <coughs> Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Because David knows very well, the only way you can have joy, and joy of salvation is when you are restored into his presence. In fellowship. Amen. May God um, uh, help us in Jesus' name. See John 15 verse 11. See talking about the joy we enjoy in fellowship with God in being in his presence. The Christ says in 15, in John 15 verse 11. It says, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you. And that your joy may be full. Can you see? There is no way you can have joy without Christ. And without his father. This thing I have spoken to you. That my joy may remain in you. And that your joy may be full. Mm. Amen. Joy comes in knowing God. And in being with his presence. We can have no joy. Except in a proper fellowship. In a proper relationship with God. And others. Amen. So part of the reason why. Apostle John the beloved wrote this epistle was to, to promote fellowship, to encourage believers, you know, to fellowship with God. You know, fellowship carries both the idea of a positive relationship that people share and participation in a common interest of a goal. You cannot have fellowship with someone whom you don't have relationship with. Amen. And now let's go to verse 5, our key scripture for today. You know, because uh, for us to have true fellowship, 
you know, we need to understand the nature of God. We need to understand who God is. Who is this God we are talking about? We need to understand him, you know. And when you look at that verse 5 we are going to right now, you see the Bible says, this is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all, my God. Anytime I take this scripture, anytime I, I, I meditate on 1 John 1, 5, it triggers something inside of me. It triggers a, a deeper a deeper desire for God in me. Said so this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light. In other words, God is not darkness. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. I want you to underline at all in your Bible. When you are, when someone tells you something that look I am going somewhere, I am going to visit you, and I'm not going to, <coughs> and I'll be there so, so, so time, and I don't want to, uh, I, I, I don't want to see anything, you know, negative at all, I don't want anything, once you put at all there, it means that look, it, it's, there is zero tolerance, there is zero tolerance, in other words, here, the Bible says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness, at all in other words there is zero tolerance for darkness in god hallelujah there is zero tolerance for darkness in god god is light mm. now we must begin our understanding of god here amen we are not trying to say that the only thing that god is is light this is one of his major attributes this is one of his major nature God is light. You know, as we go on also, we are going to see another nature of God. God is righteous. God is love. You know, this are his nature. But let's start here. We have to start from the light. Apostle John start from whom God is light. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. You know, John declares this, you know, on the simple understanding that God himself is light. And light by definition has no darkness at all in it. There's no way you can combine light and darkness together. When light comes, darkness disappear. Amen. And we, are, we are talking about, don't forget the theme of our of this series is knowing God. You want to know God? God is light, number one, and there's no darkness in him at all. Glory to God. If I just stop there and repeat this so that it can sink into your heart, I, I, I think I'm fulfilled. But let's get some more because thank God for we, we still have a, a little more time, you know. And light defines that look, darkness is there is zero, zero tolerance for, for darkness in God. For there to be darkness, there must be an absence of light. If you want darkness, then light has to be absent. If you want light, then darkness has to be absent. Amen. Amen. This is very, 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 very clear. And we can experience it. We can. It's something we can experiment. This is something we do often. When you enter a room and there was no light in that room, you just switch on the light and darkness just disappears. That is, that's just the nature of God. Just as you enter into your room that was very dark before, and now you switch on the light and darkness disappear, that is how God is. Light and darkness cannot cohabit. They cannot coexist together in the same room. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Light is what? Light is the purest, the most subtle, the most useful and the most diffusive of all God's, you know, creatures. It is therefore a very proper emblem of the purity, perfection, and goodness of the divine nature. When we talk about light, we are talking about God's purity. We are talking about His perfection. We are talking about God's, you know, goodness. That's His divine nature. 
Light is a metaphor of what? Righteousness and goodness of God. While darkness signifies evil and sin. When you look at the Bible, when you look at the scripture, you know, darkness actually signifies evil. It signifies sin. In fact, it's synonymous with Satan. Darkness is synonymous with, with Satan. The Bible talks about the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and to the kingdom of his dear son. Let's look at that scripture. Colossians chapter chapter 1. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Thank you Holy Spirit for, for taking us to that scripture. Mm. Uh, verse, verse 13. Hmm. Let's take it from verse 12. Colossians 1, 12 and 13. He said, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partaker of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Verse 13. I'm going there. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. You can see darkness there. Darkness talks about the power of Satan. The power of the kingdom of Satan and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his beloved and uh, what is unique about the kingdom of the son of his beloved talking about the kingdom of christ the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god himself is light so you can see god has taken us are you a child of god are you a believer are you born again this is what has happened to you this is what has happened to me he has delivered us he has delivered you from the power of darkness and convey us into his, the kingdom of the son of his love. Hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I want us to go back to our text in First John. Now, let's look at the, the scripture, the, the text, the, the verse that follows verse 5. Let's go to verse 6. Show me verse 5 and 6. You know, when you look at verse 5 and 6, you will see verse 5 says, hmm, God is light. You know, and in him there's no darkness at all. You know, this is the message which we have heard from him. And declare to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Verses. Now, this is where we are going. And this is the problem of the world. This is a problem we have with believers. This is the problem of the church today. If we say that we have fellowship with him. And walk in darkness. We lie. And do not practice the truth. I want us to pause there. If we say that we have fellowship with him, if we say that we are Christians, if we say that we are pastors, if we say that we are bishops, if we say we are prophets, oh, if we say we are members, born again, given our life to Christ, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and yet walk in darkness. Remember in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 where we read, is that same place where we have been delivered from and we still walk in that darkness we are telling lies and we do not practice the truth lies that i mean what is that lie john is trying to say john is saying that we are telling lies that we have fellowship with god it's not possible it's not possible for you to have fellowship with god who is light and you walk in darkness mm -hmm. it's not possible it's not possible that is is because you don't know God. That is why we need to highlight, we need to stress the need for us to understand God who is light. Are you a Christian? Are you born again? Or you're just a church goer? And maybe your name is Paul. <laughs> your name is Stephen. Oh, your name is Peter. <laughs> Whatever be your name. And you still walk in darkness. And you say you have fellowship with, with God. Then the Bible says you are lying. May God have mercy on us. May God have mercy. God have mercy. Many Christians are not aware of their true condition. Many of us, we don't have the, 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 the true understanding of who we are or even our condition. Because with the kind of news, with the kind of you know information about believers, about the church, about the present state of the church about the present condition of the church you will marvel that look is this the church jesus christ died for 
Is this the same God that is light that we are saying we are worshipping? And we are living this kind of filthy, corrupt life. May God have mercy. Many of us, we, we are not aware of our true condition. You know, it is true that they know that they are saved. And have experienced, they have experienced conversion. And have repented at some times in their life. It is true. Yet they do not live in true fellowship with God. Where is the fellowship? Where is the fellowship? Why? Because you cannot continue. Let's go back to that verse 6. You cannot continue to walk in darkness. And you say you have fellowship with God. It's not possible. You are a liar. I am a liar if I'm doing that. May God have mercy on us. John speaks of a walk in darkness indicating a pattern of living. Look at it. If we say that we have fellowship with him, if we say that we have fellowship with him, who is light? If we say that we have fellowship with God, who is light, and who there cannot be darkness at all, and walk in darkness, we are telling lies. And we do not practice the truth. May God have mercy on us. Mm. You know, John speaks of walking in darkness, which indicates a pattern of living. This does not speak of an occasional lapses, but a lifestyle of life of darkness. We are talking about, about your lifestyle. Now, let's, let's examine our lifestyle for a moment. Let's examine it. Let's examine it. Let's examine our lifestyle. Are we truly having fellowship with God? In our lifestyle, how do we live our Christian life? How is your prayer life? How is your word life? How do you live your life day to day? How is there any element of darkness, any element of sinful lifestyle, nature in you? Do you still commit all sorts of things, immorality? Do you still walk in darkness? Do you still have fellowship with all the, I mean, your past life? Don't forget Colossians 1 verse 13. For we have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. Don't forget. Do you still have anything to do with the kingdom of darkness? Or do you still stroll, do you still pay visits to Egypt? Do you still pay a visit to the kingdom of darkness once in a while? Or do you still walk around your own lifestyle? Do you still live those kind of whole lifestyle? And the lifestyle of fornication and hatred, malice, adultery, drunkenness? See the works of flesh. Do you still have anything to do with the works of flesh? Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is just giving me some, some, some reminder. Do you still walk in darkness? Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at any of this work of the flesh, do you still engage in it? And yet you say you have, you, 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 you have fellowship with God. The Bible says you are a liar. And you are not practicing the truth. Let's look at this. Do you still engage yourself? <clears throat> That's, let me read from chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Let me read from verse 16. Hmm. From verse 16 to verse um, 18. Let's look at that. He said, I say then, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Do you still fulfill the lust of the flesh? Do you still walk in the flesh? The Bible says, I, 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 for the flesh lusts after the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. If you walk in the flesh, you are walking in darkness. If you have a lifestyle of, uh, of the flesh, you are, having, you are walking in darkness. That's what it means. Amen. Now, let's look at, and, and I know that so that you do not do the things that you wish. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Let's look at verse 19. Verse 19, very key. Now, the works of the flesh are evidence, which are adultery. You see, when the Bible talks about the works of the flesh, it's still part of the works of darkness. It's anything of the flesh. 
any of this work if you still have a lifestyle in it. And that is what we are seeing today in the church of God, in the body of Christ. And it, 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 not just among the members, but among the ministers of God. They're supposed to be ministers of God. We're supposed to have a fellowship with God who is light. And yet, we engage in what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry. You know, if you, you contention, hatred, sorcery, jealousy, ambitions, you know, dissension, heresy. These are the things you, you walk in. If you walk in all this, the Bible says you are a liar. You are not you are not having fellowship with God. You are, you are not. You are not. And if you want to know this God, if you want to have a sin, the whole essence of this teaching, the whole essence of this expository teaching is for us to come back to God, to enjoy our fellowship with God. And if you are ready, if you are ready to, to submit or to come back to God that God will restore you. And if you are ready to give your life to Jesus, why not say this short prayer with me? This teaching is not to condemn us, but to draw us further to the Father. I want you to say this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I am a sinner, but you died for me. Jesus Christ, come into my life. By, Lord, be my Lord and my Savior. Take control of my life. I don't want to live a life of the flesh, of, of darkness any longer. From this day forward, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations. You have joined the family of God. You are restored. Just make sure you join yourself to a Bible-believing church, to a place where the word of God is being preached and teached undiluted. Not trying to teach you or preach to you what you want to hear. But to teach you what God wants you to hear. And if you are an Eastern, come to Faith and Grace Church. The address is on the screen. You, 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 you will be taught how to know God. You will be taught how to walk with God. You will be taught how to fellowship with God. Because we, by the grace of God, we want to lead by example. Our service is between 9 and 10.30 in the morning on Sunday. We go into the world street, we don't waste time. And if you, uh, you, if you, if you tr get a try, I am telling you, you will enjoy, you will never regret coming. And you will love to come again and again. And my prayer is that this word that you have received today, which is just the beginning of this teaching, we continue to energize you. We create a fire and a burning in your heart. To know God. Knowing God is the thing we are talking about. Not knowing about God. I want you to know God. Know God for yourself. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV.